This program has been brought to you by Abiding Above Ministries. We'll take God's Word and turn to Colossians chapter 3. I want to talk tonight about how to live heavenly on earth. And I want to read these first three verses of Colossians chapter 3. The Apostle Paul says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. I want you to notice that word above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above. Notice again he said above. Not on the things on the earth. And then he said this, For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Now when you read that, if you don't read it slowly, and if you don't think it through as you're reading it, you may not grasp what this means. But I want to tell you, I've been reading God's Word a long time. But this passage so enlightened me to something that I never saw for so many years in my life that I can honestly say this, my life has never been the same since I began to understand these three verses. It's never been the same. I've got a joy in my heart now and a peace that passes all understanding. Because I understand these three verses. There's something very special here that I want you to see tonight. And I promise you on the authority of the Word of God. If you can just keep seeking what I'm talking about tonight. Set your mind like in concrete on this truth. I can promise you this. Your life will never ever be the same again. If you'll just only listen to me. Now, what is Paul talking about here? I believe Paul is reminding us. So the first point I'd like to make is the reminder. Paul is reminding us of something that's already true of you and me. He's reminding us of our position in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. Yes, physically we're alive. We all are alive. We're physically looking at one another, relating to one another. But the Apostle Paul says that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. He's talking about we are born spiritually dead. The reason a person has to be saved is because they come into this world not saved. The reason we sin on the outside is because we're sinners on the inside. And when Jesus Christ died on the cross, He died for that sin. Now, the very first man was Adam. And every child that's ever been born since Adam, which includes all of us, was born in sin. We were born in Adam. And so therefore, we're born spiritually dead, physically alive, spiritually dead. So here we are. Spiritually, we're absolutely lifeless. And then at some point in your life, just like with me, you begin to realize... I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. And maybe someone's preaching or maybe someone's sharing with you the Word of God and you begin to realize something's wrong with me. I do need what they're extending to me. I can't die without Christ or I'll be eternally separated from Him. And you begin to look at the cross. You begin to see Jesus up there and realize He died in my place on the cross. And then you put all your trust where God put all of your sin. You put it on Jesus and Him dying there with your sin, shedding His blood. And you say, my only way to heaven is through Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one can come to the Father but by me. And at that moment when you see that and you believe that, you ask Him to come into your heart and He saves you. And at that moment, we know that means you've been born Again, the first time you were born in Adam, the second time you're born in Christ Jesus. So this is what happens to you. Though you were dead in your trespasses and sins, you've been made alive in Christ Jesus. He looks at you as a sinner, but he looks at you and sees that you put your trust on his son for your salvation. So therefore, he sees you covered in the blood of his son. 
And so therefore, He sees you no longer in a state of sin. He now sees you in Christ Jesus. And so therefore, He sees you as He sees His Son, perfect in Christ Jesus. Now, I know that's hard to swallow. That's hard to think and, and, and grasp and comprehend because you realize, I don't deserve it. But listen to me. It is true of you, whether you believe it or not. It is true of you. You, if you truly are a child of God, you're in Christ Jesus. The old things really are passed away. And behold, new things have come. But if you don't understand this truth, my friend, you will live your life thinking somehow I've got to do something. I've got to go to church enough. I've got to give enough. Read my Bible enough. Redo my Sunday school lesson enough. Somehow I've got to earn this acceptance. I know salvation is by grace. I understand that. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2 tells us that. But somehow in your emotional makeup, you think God's displeased with me. And I've got to work and do things just right to get his acceptance. My friend, if you are a child of God, he has covered all of your sin, past, present, and future by the death of his uh, son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. He's already accepted you in his son. He sees you already in heaven. You're not going to get to heaven one day. In the mind of God, according to the word of God, you're already there. And listen, this is what will happen. When you realize that and believe it wholeheartedly, instead of living your life on this earth in, in the Christian life being drudgery, things are going to change for you. And you're going to be, instead of trying to live a certain way to get His acceptance and approval, and instead of being a do-oriented Christian, trying to do all these things in order to be, you're going to begin to be who you already are in Christ. And now you're ready to do under the power and control of the Holy Spirit. It will change the way you think. It'll change the way you love. It'll change the way you're able to receive love from other people. It'll change the way you see Scripture. It'll change every part of you if you can only see what I'm sharing with you tonight. I want you to get this picture in your mind. Picture Christ. Picture you being inside of Him, clothed with His righteousness. By His stripes, you were healed. God sees you perfect in Christ Jesus. You say, I don't believe it. Listen to me. If this is not true, you can't go to heaven. Sin cannot enter heaven. Something cleaned up cannot enter heaven. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And so therefore, if you say, well, boy, I know when I die, I'm going to heaven. You need to say this. I'm already in heaven according to the Word of God and according to what God says to me. I'm already in heaven, in God's eyes, clothed with His righteousness. And I don't deserve it. None of us deserve it. It's the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You have to accept it by faith and you have to walk in it day by day by faith. This is true of me. You say, why is this so important to you? Because everywhere I go, I see defeat in the Christian life. It's so sad. I know if people could just see this, things are going to change in the church. You could have this church packed out with no pastor if the people in the pew could see what I'm saying. I'm not here to preach down to you. I'm not a guilt preacher. If you motivate somebody by guilt, you're just going to get more and more of the same. I'm trying to share with you something you already have if you're a believer, but maybe you've never known it. Maybe you've never seen it clearly. You're in Christ. You're clothed with His righteousness. All of your sin has been taken care of, even what you'll do next week. You say, that's cheap grace. No, it's not. It's expensive grace. It costs the life of the Son of God. That is not cheap. I don't even like that terminology. It's not cheap. It's love. It's mercy. And it's the grace of Almighty God. What did Paul say? He said, If then you have been raised up with Christ. You say, what does that mean? Well, if you've been raised up, that means you must have been lying down with Christ. 
You say, when did I lie down with Christ? Remember what Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20? Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. He said, nevertheless, he says, I live, yet not I. But he said, Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. My friend, right this moment, God either sees you in one of two ways. He either sees you still in Adam, lost, or he sees you in Christ Jesus, saved. Which one is it for you? Are you lost or are you saved? The Apostle Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. Let me show you another picture here. Picture my Bible as being Christ. And picture my notebook as being you. You came from your father. Your father came from your grandfather. Your grandfather came from his father and grandfather. And if you could trace you back all the way to the very beginning, where did I come from? You would have come out of the loins of Adam. You came from Adam. I came from Adam. All of us came from Adam. Black, white, Chinese, it doesn't matter. We all came from the same man. Nobody's better than the other. It's going to be all kinds in heaven. You got Christ. And here you are. When you prayed and asked Jesus to come to your heart, God took you out of Adam. He placed you in Christ Jesus just this way. Just like that. And then... When Jesus died on the cross, because you're in Christ, you died on the cross. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. It's not just that Paul was crucified with Christ. Every one of you, if you're a child of God, you were crucified on the cross with him. There Christ is, there you are. He died on the cross completely. The Bible said his, he gave up his spirit. They took him down. And they buried him into a borrowed tomb. But praise God, on the third day, he was raised by the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that lives in you, if you are a believer, the same one who lives in me, is the same one who came into Jesus and brought him out of the tomb. And so there you were, crucified with Christ, buried with Christ. You say, well, I didn't live back then. Listen to me, in the mind of God, God saw you hanging on the cross with Jesus. He saw you buried in the tomb. He saw you raised on the third day with him. And then from the Mount of Olives, Jesus went all the way up to heaven. And the Bible said he sat down where? By the right hand of who? Listen to me. God the Father, when he looks to his right hand in heaven and sees God the Son, he sees you in him. Already there. Perfect in Christ Jesus. Clothed with His righteousness. You didn't get there by church attendance, memorizing scripture, listening to sermons, going back to the, forth to the church, serving in church. That didn't get you there. That doesn't keep you there. And that is not your means of acceptance. Your means of acceptance is based on the fact that Jesus Christ died in my place on the cross and I died with Him on the cross according to Galatians 2.20. And according to Colossians 3, 1 through 3, what did Paul say? If then you've been raised with Christ. Well, you had to be crucified with him. You had to be in the tomb with him to to be raised with him. If then you've been raised with Christ, he says, he didn't say keep seeking the things below how to get rich. He said keep seeking the things above. And then later he says, set your mind on the things above. Two times he said, don't think earthly, think eternally. And what he's saying is this. You keep setting your mind, you keep seeking one thing. I'm in Christ, already in heaven, according to the word of God. Keep seeking the things above. Set your mind on the things above. Why? Because your life is hidden with Christ In God. Listen, my friend. God sees you already in heaven. If you truly are a child of God. Proverbs says this. 
As a man thinks in his heart, what? So is he. You show me a man or woman who's a believer, who does not understand what I just shared with you. What they think in their heart about themselves is earthly. I feel like a failure. I don't measure up. I hope they don't ask me to say something. Because they see themselves in a temporary uh, state instead of an eternal state. And so they're encumbered with the things of the world needlessly. If they would see themselves the way I just explained, it would so free them up on the inside that they could live a heavenly life on earth right here now. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I promise you on the authority of God's word, if you'll get this message before I leave and set it in your mind like concrete, it's going to change how you think. Your mind's going to be renewed and it's going to affect your actions and your relationships and the things that happen in your life. It'll set a whole new direction in your life. What do we have in Christ Jesus? According to the Apostle Paul, we've been co-crucified. Again, I'm crucified with Christ. It's nevertheless I live, yet Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. So you know what that means? I now have a new identity. I'm not wanting to be like this beautiful starlet, this entertainer that I idolize. I want to see what she dresses, what kind of shoes she wears. I want to sing like she sings. I'm not going to try to be like Tiger Woods and be the best golfer. I'm not emulating anybody. I'm not trying to be like some country music star. I'm not trying to be like some politician. I'm not trying to be like some other preacher. My identity is not wrapped up in any person that walks the face on the, of the earth and puts on their pants just like I put on mine. My identity is not wrapped up in what I drive, the jewelry I wear, the clothes that I wear, where my son and daughter attend school and where they're going to attend college. It's not wrapped up in who my father was or who my mother was. It's not wrapped up in any kind of position, any kind of belongings that I might have, because, my friend, all of that is temporary. It's subject to change with the stock market. It's subject to change with death. It's subject to change with getting that report from the doctor that you've got cancer. All of that is subject to change. But listen to me. I'll tell you something that will never change. If you're in Christ, that will never change. That is eternal. Nobody can snatch you out of his hand. You've been sealed in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit. And so therefore, where do you get your sense of belonging, your sense of family, your sense of unity, your sense of well-being, your significance? Where do you get all that? I get it in only one thing that won't move. I get it in the fact that in the eyes of of God, I was crucified with Christ, I was buried with Him, I was raised with Him, and right now in the eyes of God, I am seated with Him already in heaven in God's eyes. It's over with. Jesus said, it is finished, and He meant it. Instead of thinking, oh Lord, I just hope I, I, hope I get there, Brother Chris. You know, I just serve the best I know how around the church. Am I, are you pleased with me yet, God? Because I don't feel like you are. And that's the way most Christians live. And it's sad because I want to tell you what. When their children and grandchildren watch them walk that way, they say, I don't want any part of that. And that's why they're not in the churches. That's why we don't have a new level of leadership coming through our Southern Baptist churches across this nation. They're not back there. You can go in some of the largest churches in Memphis, Tennessee, and it's now three or four hundred sitting down front in this huge sanctuary that's dark, and all these seats back here, they even keep those lights shut off just trying to pay the light bill. What they, they talk about having a thousand in Sunday school 20, 30 years ago. What happened? Why didn't we bring up these people back here? You say, well, they rejected us. No. But yeah, they rejected the, what, what they saw in the, in the lives of most Christians. Living poverty, though, they're rich. What did Paul say? 
Paul said that we have a new identity in Christ Jesus. In Romans chapter 6, 3 through 5, listen to what Paul says. Listen to what he says here. He says, know ye not. In other words, I know what he felt like. It's like I want to tell people, do you not see this? He says, know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized, notice, into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, I may crucified with Christ, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. You say, what does that mean? I'm going to keep going over and over again because I know how I am. It takes me a while. Paul is saying this, do you not know that you died with Christ, you're buried with Christ, you're raised with Christ, and you're ascended with Christ, you're seated with Christ, you're already in heaven in God's eyes. Every time y'all baptize here, that's what that's a picture of. The minister stands up there, the person being baptized stands there, they're holding his arm right here, and he's got the handkerchief right here, you know the routine. That's a picture of, I'm crucified with Christ. And then he puts them on the water. That's a picture of, I'm buried with him. And when he raises them, that's a picture of being raised with Christ Jesus. This is true of you, whether you believe it or whether you understand it. The sooner you understand this, your life will never, ever, ever be the same again. So what does that mean, Brother Chris? That means our position is eternally perfect. Not just temporary, but eternally perfect. Hebrews 10, 14 says, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Now this is not based on our performance. It's based on our position. Remember, it was the performance of Jesus on the cross that has made our position possible. And the love, grace, and mercy of God that has been bestowed upon us. It's what he did, not what you do. But we live, we live in an age for the past 50, 60 years. Most Christians have this in their mind. I've got to do to be. I've got to do to be. I've got to do to be. And that is so wrong. And it's a trick of the devil. You don't have to do anything, my friend, to be who you are in Christ. You simply need to walk under the power and control of the Holy Spirit, living a life of surrender and submission to Him. And then all that you already are will come through you. You'll be being who you already are instead of doing, trying to be. And that's why Christians are hung up. That's why they go from one Bible study to another and another. And that's why ministers have no power in their ministry because most ministers do not understand this truth until they're in their 50s. And it's not because they're not intelligent. There is an emotional block from their childhood that blocks them from seeing this most beautiful, wonderful truth. I've heard men teach on Romans 6, 7, and 8, Ephesians, Galatians, Colossians. And you could just tell, even though they were saying the words, they were not experienced the very words that they were speaking. And so it's not based on our performance, but it's based on our position in Christ. In Christ, my friend, you're fully forgiven. You are fully forgiven. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14 says, In whom? Talking about being in Christ. Remember, here you are. You're in Christ. When did I get put in Christ? When Jesus died, you died. When Jesus was buried, you were buried. When Jesus was raised, you were raised. When he ascended, you ascended. When he sat down by the right hand of the Father, you sat down because you're in him. And so therefore he says, In him... You are forgiven. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. In Christ, my friend, you've been declared righteous. God has declared you and me righteous. You say, but Chris, you don't know what I've done. Nobody knows what I've done. But I know what I've done. And Chris, you're telling me God sees me righteous, my friend, if you truly are a child of God. God can't see you but any way but righteous. Why? It's because you're in Christ Jesus. Chris, are you making light of sin? Oh, no, I'm not making light of sin. I'm magnifying the cross. 
Look what he did. He took it all upon him. And listen, my friend, when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Do you realize at that moment, God the Father was turning his back on God the Son because of your sin and mine. Tell me that somebody's getting away from sin. I'll tell you, it ain't no way. No sin that you've ever committed has been gotten away with. And no sin that's ever been committed against you is gotten away with because Jesus Christ died for all sin. He died for all of it. Can you imagine? He who was perfect, sinless, the Son of God, became fully sin. And because God the Father cannot be in the presence of sin, He had to turn His back on His Son, Jesus. And that's when He cried out. That's when the separation was. And my friend, I don't know what kind of preaching you've been under in the past. I don't know. have no way to know, but I suspect what you've been under. I'm not talking about with my brother Robert, but when you were under preaching before I was even born, I suspect what you heard was hellfire damnation. And what I'm sharing with you is all that hellfire damnation was burned out in the Son of God, Jesus. He is the propitiation for our sins. That means the satisfaction. The Bible said it pleased God to crucify His own Son in your behalf and mine. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to die in your place on the cross for all of your sins. In Christ, you're declared righteous. In Christ, you are accepted by God. As sinners, we are separated from God. But as believers, we can come boldly into His presence. Ephesians 2.13 says, But now, in Christ Jesus, do you see how many times Paul says, in Christ Jesus, in the epistles. If you'll just circle it in red every time you see that in the New Testament, you're going to be shocked how many times it's in there. And I want you to get this picture in your mind. Every time you see it, you picture you being in Christ Jesus, being clothed with His righteousness, having all of your sin, past, present, and future, taken away from you. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Picture that. I'm free in Christ Jesus. I'm clean in Christ Jesus. I'm perfect in Christ Jesus. I'm justified. I'm righteous. I am accepted. I believe one of the reasons people cannot absorb this truth has nothing to do with intellect. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I believe this is the reason. Because we've been rejected by mother and father, grandmother and grandfather, uncle and aunt, preachers, for so many years, that when somebody comes along and preaches acceptance based on the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, we can't emotionally exercise faith in it, even though in our minds and our intellect we know what the Word of God says. It's because our damaged emotions block us from spiritual truth. And so therefore, because you... Wanted to fit in, but you, I just couldn't get close to my father. My, my mother was just, she just, she just henpecked all of us. I just, no, I never felt loved by her. I just couldn't get close. You think God's that way, and He is nothing like your mother or father. He's God. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, gaze at the cross. If He doesn't love fully and completely, He never would have sent His Son to die who was sinless. In your place in mine, he never would have done that. Paul says, in Christ you are accepted by God. He said, in Christ that you're holy. You know, you are a saint. You mean, that means holy one. Do you realize we stand in the holiness? Why? Because we stand inside Christ Jesus. Remember, here you are. You're clothed with Christ. You don't deserve it. I don't either. The way it was purchased for you and me, Jesus died. And so therefore, you stand inside of Him and you're clothed with His holiness. You are a saint. You are a holy one. Not by your performance. Not by how good you do. It's by the performance of Jesus Christ on the cross. And it's been given to you and bestowed on you. 
though you did not deserve it. And so God sees you as his holy one. In Christ you are complete. Colossians 2, 9 and 10 says, notice this, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. Two times in that one verse he says in him. He says you are complete. Well, I don't feel complete. I've just got to do this to feel complete. I've got to go there. I've got to have this to be complete. You know the devil would want you to think that way? Do you realize if you are a child of God, you already are complete? Do you realize in Genesis, the ark is a picture of Christ? And do you realize when Noah went in to the ark, that's a picture of being baptized into Christ? My friend, when you were saved, God took you out of Adam. He placed you in Christ. He sealed you inside Christ, the ark, by the Holy Spirit. What I'm preaching is from cover to cover. In the Bible, from Genesis all the way to Revelations, it is so true of us, and we must see it. You are complete in Him. And so that's the reminder. Paul, I believe he's just thinking, please know this. You're in Christ. You're clothed with His righteousness. Second thing is not only the reminder, but what's the responsibility that we have? It's not hard. Paul said, keep seeking. Our responsibility is to keep seeking. He said, keep seeking the things above. You say, Chris, what does he mean by above? I've already told you. (laughs) You're crucified with Christ. You're buried with him. You're raised with him. You're ascended with him. You're seated with him. When God the Father looks at God the Son, he sees you there for all eternity. And that is above. God wants you to get your mind on that position off of your clothes, off of your sporting team that you love, off of hunting, off of fishing, off of politics, off of who's best around town, off of the latest gossip, off of what kind of truck you're going to drive, what kind of car you're going to drive, off of status, off of power, off of possessions. And this is what he wants you to do. He wants you to keep seeking, and he wants you to set your mind like concrete, And he wants you to turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things on this earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Be ye therefore transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind, Chris? Set your mind. Keep seeking. I'm already in Christ in heaven. That is my position. For anything else to take that place in my life is for me to step way down. That is life on the highest plane. So Paul tells us to keep seeking. That speaks of a continuous action. It's just like the alcoholic. He keeps going to the bottle. You say, now look, you gotta, if you're gonna, if you're gonna kick the habit, you gotta quit, you gotta throw, you gotta pour it down the drain, you gotta get rid of it. And then, he sneaks around, he gets some more. I wanna encourage you. Do that with what I'm teaching. Keep seeking it. I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. I'm already in heaven. I've been declared righteous. I didn't deserve it. He bestowed it on me. That's what grace is all about. G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense for me. That's what that is. You just exercise faith. F-A-I-T-H. Forsaking all, I trust Him. Period. Our responsibility is to keep seeking and to set our minds. Heard about a man who had an old, broken-down farm. He had a few chickens and a few goats. He barely eked out a living until he was about 80. Then he died. And then his children 
got the land, of course, as an inheritance. And they said, let's just by chance get someone to check it out and see if there's oil underneath. They drilled on that man's broken down farm and found an oil reservoir. That man was rich, but he never knew it. My friend, if you truly are a child of God, listen to me. You are rich. You may not know it. I'm praying with all of my heart while I'm speaking that somehow this is going to grip you. But my friend, if you say, I'm a Christian, you are so rich. But you may not know it. And if you don't know it, you won't exercise faith on what you have. And you'll live in poverty and be buried out here in this cemetery, having done nothing except be a church attender and a sermon taster. Not knowing I'm already rich. If you don't see this, true. I'm convinced, as I'm as convinced as I'm standing here, if you don't see this truth in a childlike way and walk by faith in it, you're never going to experience what God intended you to experience and who you are supposed to be on this earth. You're never going to be there. It's impossible. You must know these things because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So our responsibility is to keep seeking and to set our mind on the things above. And when we, when, when that happens, we begin to see his plan for our lives. Not only that, we begin to see God's desire for other people. C.D. Meg said this. He says, Lord, help me to live from day to day in such a self-forgetful way that even when I kneel to pray, my prayers will be for others. Help me in all the work I do to ever be sincere and true and know that all I do for you must needs be done for others. Let self be crucified and slain and buried deep and all in vain. May efforts be to rise again unless to live for others. Others, Lord, yes, others. Let this my motto be. Help me to live for others that I may live like thee. Our responsibility is to see my position in Christ, to be reminded I have it all already in Christ because I've been baptized into Him, justified, declared righteous. I need to just walk in light of this while this renews my mind and I can begin to live a heavenly life on earth instead of just simply a mere existence, looking at the eternal things, being like An ant can only see this far instead of being able to back off and seeing the whole big picture. I'm just here for a moment. Then I'm gone. I'm already in heaven, perfect in Christ Jesus, filled by His Holy Spirit. And one day I'll breathe my last breath and I'll step from here to there and catch up with my position, so to speak, and live with Him for all eternity. We begin to think eternally instead of temporary. Last thing is this. We've looked at Paul's reminder. We've looked at our responsibility to set our mind, to keep seeking the things above. Last thing is what's the resource? The Bible says where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. The resource is Christ himself in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. Not that you will do for me. I'll do it through you. He is the resource. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, He said, I will do it, not you will do it. The resource is Jesus Christ in you. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For as many as may be the promises of God... In Him they are, yes. Wherefore, also by Him is our amen to the glory of God through us. You say, Chris, why deliver a message like this? This is the only message I know that will take defeat out of a Christian's experience. And so liberate them and free them that they're happy in Jesus 
as they trust and obey. I just want to encourage you to do one thing. And then I'm closing. I'm going. I want you to walk every day knowing I've been crucified with Christ. I've been buried with Him. I've been raised with Him. I ascended with Him. When He sat down, I sat down because I'm in Him. And when God the Father looks at God the Son, He sees me in Him. And so therefore, when you're walking through your town, doing your day-to-day things, whatever they may be, when you feel this tug to want to be noticed, want somebody to look at me, or I want to be heard, you're going to, I'm going to get the last word. You can't do me that way. I pray with, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will bring back this. I'm in Christ. Christ is in me. I don't have to be noticed. I don't even have to be loved. I don't even have to be accepted. I don't have to be heard. I don't have to be understood. I don't even have to live. I'm already complete in Him. I can live to give because I'm already full. He's in me and I am Him. I'm satisfied. This is my prayer for all of you, that you'll live a heavenly life on earth. Amen. Oh, Father, I ask you now to do in the heart and mind of somebody here, all, all of them, Father, if it's your will, the same thing you did for me when I was in Mississippi, in the Mississippi Delta, a railroad engineer, not knowing what I just now taught. Father, knowing that most people here probably doesn't see this, they were right where I was. Yes, saved, but living as a poor man or woman because they don't see their riches in Christ and they're trying to get temporary things to satisfy eternal things and it's impossible. Oh, Father, help them to see it clearly. Father, I trust you by your Holy Spirit that they'll see it. And they'll begin to have their minds renewed. And when they go about, they'll be a reflection of you. And you will use them in the most special way in this church and in this community as they abide in you. And then one day you'll call them home. They'll leave everything here. Everything they've saved and built will be left here. They'll walk in there with you, and you'll say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Father, help them not to go away sleepy, tired, getting busy with all kinds of things, so that this truth is quickly snatched out of their thinking. Oh, Father, protect it. It's so precious. Make it fruitful. Is my prayer. My friend, you may be here tonight and you say, what's stopping this from happening in my life? It's your human will. You're wanting to have your own way. You've been driving the car of your life for a long time. It's time to stop. You've been listening to Abiding Above with Chris Hodges. For more information, go to our website, abidingabove.org, or write Post Office Box 3916, Cordova, Tennessee, 38088. God bless you and make you a blessing.